Hey guys, this is Mark Hughes for cardowners.com and today I'm going to be making a four tabling video at 100 NL on stars. I just sat these players, uh, they all seem like regulars, they seem competent, but I don't really know much about them. I played clear mind about 300 hands, almost only at zoom heads up, I think, and I I have some notes on him, and from what I remember, he's kind of a straightforward standard player, although players in the zoom heads up definitely have some odd tendencies, and there will be a few hands at the end that are zoom actually, and maybe I can talk about them. But uh, let's just get right into the action. On the bottom left, I call a 3-bet from SpiderWebZ, don't really know much about his 3-betting frequency or what he's doing in 3-bet pots, but definitely call him a 7-9 suited as a standard. And he c-bets the flop, I call and just with the intention of trying to show it down. He checks the turn, I check it back, and I refer in. So he checks to me and I'm just gonna value bet. I opted to value bet a little bit smaller than, I, I think I bet like 25, let me just see. Um, at the time I thought I just didn't represent that much air and I wanted to try and get him to make some crying calls with maybe 10x or pocket eights or something. But I do actually represent 5-4 flush draws, 5-8, Stuff like that pretty well because I would check those back on the turn a lot of the times with 100 big blinds just because I don't want to get check jammed off them. It's a really dicey spot when you start betting draws with 100 big blinds on the turn in 3-bet pots because your opponent won't check call all that often and is often going to be check raising or check folding and that really sucks for your draws. So I would have bluffs and also I would bet a lot of king x's on the turn especially since I'm probably not flatting his first 3-bet super wide so I wouldn't have you know, king 8 offsuit. And stuff like that so most of my kings would be pretty good and would be good enough to bet the turn for value so um i don't have a super wide uh, value range so i think i was wrong in deciding to or i was wrong in assessing my range as being pretty strong here i think uh top left i'm gonna just bet three streets with my top pair top kicker top right i turn trips after he checks back the flop i think i'd occasionally check raise here depending on the player, there are definitely some players who will just auto bet any pair when check two in the spot. But I think against the majority of players, they're going to have a lot of 5x's, king highs, pocket eights, pocket sevens, even jack x's that take a free card. So I think my standard is going to be the bet there. Um, and bet every single river, hoping to just get called down by a wide range of hands. On the bottom left, I'd usually call here, but. His sizing just made me feel like he had checked the turn with 10x or something and was just putting in a value bet. So I decided to fold, but I'd usually call there. Bottom left, he ended up having pocket aces, which, I mean, I lost value against on the river because he would have been calling any size bet, I assume. But it's a very strange line by him. I don't really like him checking the turn there, but I've seen a lot of players start checking strong hands on turns in three bet pots with the intention of check shoving, I guess. But I'm not a huge fan of it because I think it makes your double barrel lean range quite a bit weaker if you start checking your strong hands. And also it just lets me get free cards in really big pots. Um, you know, on that 10, I'm going to be checking back a lot of my range. And especially if I'm checking back draws and stuff like that, it's kind of a disaster to just let me see a free river, I think. So not great. And also the fact that he didn't bet the river after um, checking the turn. Is kind of telling so i might not give him too much credit if he starts betting in three bet pots if he's going to be playing such a strong hand so passively but it's one hand so i won't read too much into it good river on the top right if i knew he had 5x obviously i would check raise but i think his range is a lot of stuff like king highs jack x pocket eights pocket sevens and stuff like that um which i would much prefer betting against so i think against his overall range i'd prefer a bet than a check race and he did have jack x unfortunately he folds on the top left uh, bottom right, I decide to raise him. To be honest, I'm not going to barrel him too much because I think if um, he calls my raise here, he'll have a lot of ace axes, which aren't going to fold on the turn. And I could maybe try and get him off of it by the river, but I think uh, this is probably going to be a spot where I raise him and don't bluff if he calls. Until I see him donk leading stuff like 10x or pocket fives or something. Bottom left, I'll check raise. That's usually my standard. So yeah, even, I mean, that's basically the perfect card to barrel because, you know, he will have 10x sometimes and I pick up equity against um, his entire range, basically. But I still just felt like he had so many ace x's here that just weren't folding and I didn't really feel like trying to move him off of it by the river. So I decided to just take a free card. But it definitely leaves my range pretty strong here if I start checking such a good draw.